Hey guys, Britt here. Welcome to End Times Bible Prophecy. Make sure to hit the subscribe, like, and share buttons. Well, this is a clear sign of the second coming. What is it? We'll talk about it in just a second. Real quick, I want to point out that if you're not subscribed to brittgillette.substack.com, you probably missed this article that came out yesterday. This is a written article, so it won't show up on these video platforms that you're probably watching this on if you're not subscribed. So head on over and check that out. Okay, so now this is a clear sign of the second coming. It indicates how near it is. What am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about this article right here from Zero Hedge. It's titled, Rand Sees Internet of Brains by 2050. It starts off, it says, Elon Musk Neuralink Corporation implanted a brain chip into the head of a 29-year-old man with quadriplegia. The paralyzed millennial was recently seen using what he described as the force to move a computer cursor around the screen to play Civilization VI with his mind. This is further evidence that the transhumanism movement, the merger of humans and machines, is accelerating development, fundamentally improving human lives, or at least that's what billionaires are pitching. And we're going to look at some of what, what some of those people have said in the past and where this is all going. And we, we covered that event with, you know, what uh, Elon Musk calls telepathy, Right? Again, we're, we're moving beyond. There's nothing wrong with restoring the God-given natural abilities of human beings who've lost those. But when you go beyond that and you start saying, well, we're going to improve upon the design that God originated, well, then that goes into playing God. I believe that's very dangerous area, and that's where humanity is heading. So let's read the rest of this. It says, Editor Tim Hinchcliffe of the tech blog The Sociable posted a creepy quote from a new report commissioned by the UK Defense Science and Technology Laboratory and conducted by Rand Europe and Fraser Nash Consulting that read, An internet of bodies may also ultimately lead to an internet of brains, that is, human brains connected to the internet to facilitate direct brain-to-brain -brain communication and enable access to online data networks. So as Rand describes a future of the internet of bodies ecosystem that may morph into the internet of brains, a network of brain-to-brain -brain connectivity. This technology could find itself in the marketplace between 2035 and 2050. I would say that we're already there, <laughs> depending on what specific technology they're talking about. But they provide this graphic right here. And to me, this really stood out. I don't remember seeing this. John Holler said this came out in October 2020. It was published by Rand. But if you notice, they have their Internet of Body examples, and we have an electronic tattoo on this guy's right arm. <laughs> Go figure. And, oh, a microchip implant in his hand. So it's almost like, <laughs> if, if I didn't know any better, I would think they're trying to provoke a response from Christians and people who've read the Bible. But I really don't think that's the case. I think that's just how these people think. We're going to get into the mindset of that in just a second and show exactly how these people think. But as you can see, they're looking to add more and more sensors and more augmentation to the human body that they think are improvements. So let's read on. It says transhumanism implies the adoption of considerably advanced technologies by 2050, including brain-to-brain -brain communication and genetic enhancement. And frankly, I think this, this timeline needs to be bumped up because based on uh, 
the figures that have been put out in the past, Ray Kurzweil's talked about this, that by the year 2049, I believe, he had pegged that $1,000 worth of computing power would be greater than all the human brains on Earth. <laughs> so if that, if that turns out to be true, well, all of this stuff is coming way before 2050. And, you know, way before 2050. Because by, by, if, if by 2049 we have $1,000 worth of computing power it is greater than or equal to the processing power of every person on Earth, then that by definition to me is the singularity. You, you can't even imagine what the repercussions of that are. Because again, there are companies sitting on billions of dollars in cash that would be able to just, you know, multiply, <laughs> multiply the entire entirety of the hu all human brains many times over. We can't, we can't imagine what that would bring at that point. So at that point, we're long past what we can even prognosticate. So I'd say this date needs to be moved up considerably. But it says, including brain-to-brain -brain communication and genetic enhancement, and thus depends on resolving the various scientific and engineering barriers currently characterizing the field. According to the report, the technological applications for this new brain network include wearable devices and implants for tracking and analyzing physiological and environmental data, that is, biochips and implantable sensors. I ain't taking any of that stuff. I don't know about you. <laughs> These technologies aim to achieve real-time continuous monitoring of physiological data to understand human health conditions and performance. And to a degree, a lot of this is already out there. Sensory augmentation technologies, such as hearing and retinal implants designed to improve or augment sensory activities, particularly vision and hearing. Smart prosthetics are a related category, including exoskeletons, whole body robotic suits that enhance end users' physical capabilities and improve their mobility, strength, endurance, and other abilities. You know, if you remember, if you've read Racing Toward Armageddon, the book that's on the shelf right there behind me, we wrote about all of this years ago. This is part of the transhumanist ideology, the vision they have for the world that lies directly ahead of us. It says brain-computer or brain-to-brain interfaces that establish direct communications between human brains and or computer devices. And then it gives a link to the video of the Neuralink brain chip. But let's look at that last point, direct connection. We've talked about in the past many of these people that say, oh, artificial intelligence is a threat to humanity. Artificial intelligence is going to take over. And what have we stated time and again? No. <laughs> that is... That's only from the Terminator movie, right? That's not real life, because in real life, human beings, sin-fallen mankind, is way too arrogant to allow its creation, artificial intelligence, to uh, supersede it, take over, and rule. Instead, Human beings will simply merge with that artificial intelligence. So they will control the direction of the artificial intelligence because they will be merged with it. And that's what we're talking about here with these brain-to-computer, brain-to-brain interfaces. You know, what? <laughs> that, that should tell you where we're going with all this. And that's, I believe, how they end this article. It says, if and when humans become fully integrated with machines, is this just a march toward digital slavery? And I would say the answer is yes, that's where we're headed. We're headed toward a world that is enslaved to the Antichrist, that actually worships the Antichrist. That's what the Bible tells us. But 
we need to get a little bit more insight into what transhumanists are thinking in order to truly understand where this technology is taking us. Because I think a lot of people uh, still haven't made that connection yet of where exactly this is going. But I think once you get insight into what these people are saying, and then you read what the Bible says, to me, it's very clear where this world is headed. So I want to take a look at this article from Rapture Ready again. Looked at one of these the other day. Again, this is from a long time ago. I don't even know if this date is right. It's probably earlier, but as you can see, I had hair in this picture, so it was a long time ago. But this was an article about transhumanism. And I want to come down to this section right here on the transhumanist movement, because I think this will give you some insight into how these people are thinking. They mentioned in that Zero Hedge article how the billionaires are thinking, but it's all a Silicon Valley. It's really a lot of the younger generation. This is what they are thinking. It says the latest incarnation of man's rebellion against God is the transhumanist movement. Many within the movement believe the singularity will lead to the emergence of post-biological humans who are able to shed their biological bodies and, quote, upgrade their hardware. So that's what we're talking about when they say, I'm going to augment this, my vision. I'm going to augment the human body. Just as we said, Elon Musk mentioned, these brain chips will enable people to walk again. And I'm going to get one, too. And you think, well, is Elon Musk paralyzed? No. No, he's going to get a brain chip for another reason, because he wants to have telepathy. He wants to have, as that article said, quote, the force. So all of these upgrades is what they're talking about. It says others believe that by downloading themselves into a network, they will effectively become immortal. This is what these people believe, guys. This isn't what I believe, but go, go read what they say. It says, true believers have modified their diets, exercise regimens, and entire lifestyle in an effort to increase the likelihood of living to witness human reversal of the aging process and eventual human immortality. So Ray Kurzweil, who we're going to talk about right here, he's one of those people. He readily admits taking all these vitamins exercising, I'm trying to stay in good health because I don't want to miss out on this era that he thinks is going to be fantastic. Little does he know, it's most likely the tribulation that he's, <laughs> that he's building up to. But anyway, so it says, Ray Kurzweil, inventor, author, and transhumanist, is considered one of the best in the world at accurately forecasting short-term and intermediate technological trends. In chapter seven of his best-selling book, The Singularity is Near When Humans Transcend Biology, so that that was a best-selling book back in 2006. So people have been thinking about this for quite some time. It says he describes his view of the ultimate outcome of our technological advance. And this is a quote from that book. We just looked at it. So he says, The matter and energy in our vicinity will become infused with the intelligence, knowledge, creativity, beauty, and emotional intelligence, the ability to love, for example, of our human machine civilization. Our civilization will then expand outward. And again, this is this quote, turning all the dumb matter and energy we encounter into sublimely intelligent transcendent matter and energy. So in a sense, we can say the singularity will ultimately infuse the universe with spirit. Now, I read that back originally, I believe, in December of 2006, after picking up Ray Kurzweil's book. And immediately <laughs> the connect, the light bulb went off and I said, wow, this, this is what Armageddon's all about, guys. 
because here he's saying, okay, we're going to adopt all these technologies, transform ourselves into post-humans, and go out into the universe and infuse the universe with intelligence, knowledge, creativity, our spirit, all these things. I thought, well, <laughs> and of course, he's assuming that all that's out there is dumb matter and energy. And I'm thinking, no, God already did that. So you're expanding outward and you're going to come into direct physical conflict with the creator of the universe when you do that. That's where we're headed, guys. That's where the human race is going. And we'll look at some Bible verses in a moment to make that direct connection. But it says, according to Kurzweil, the universe will be infused with spirit as a result of the natural advancement of our human machine civilization. This suggests that the universe is not already infused with spirit and that if God exists, he de his designs are inferior to those who will be created by the pre predicted human machine civilization. In the next paragraph, he describes the advancement of the human machine civilization as approaching the very conception of God. Ironically, he admits that the accelerating growth of evolution, which is, this is his idea, this is what they believe, guys, can never achieve the infinite character traits exclusive to God. So here's his quote, again, from that same book, The Singularity is Near. He says, evolution moves toward greater complexity, greater elegance, greater knowledge, greater intelligence, greater beauty, greater creativity, and greater levels of subtle attributes such as love. In every monotheistic tradition, God is likewise described as all of these qualities, only without limitation. Infinite knowledge, infinite intelligence, infinite beauty, infinite creativity, infinite love, and so on. Of course, even the accelerating growth of evolution never achieves an infinite level. But as it explodes exponentially, it certainly moves rapidly in that direction. So evolution moves inexorably toward this conception of God, although never quite reaching this ideal. We can regard, therefore, the freeing of our thinking from the severe limitations of its biological form to be an essentially spiritual undertaking. <laughs> Catch that last line, guys. The freeing of our thinking from the severe limitations of our biological form. In other words, why did God create us this way? Once we liberate ourselves from these, you know, clunky biological vessels, that will be a great moment akin to a spiritual undertaking. And I agree with him. It is a spiritual undertaking, an evil and rebellious one. And guys, I want to turn your attention to what the Bible specifically says, because again, when I read this, I thought, huh, that's in the Bible right here. Psalm chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. This says, why are the nations so angry? Why do they waste their time with futile plans? The kings of the earth prepare for battle. The rulers plot together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Let us break their chains, they cry, and free ourselves from slavery to God. I believe this right here is a reference to the end of the tribulation and the gathering of the bar Battle of Armageddon. I believe that's what the kings of the earth are preparing for in this passage. And the goal is to liberate themselves from God. Let's dig a little bit deeper into that Psalm chapter 2, verse 3. It says, Let us break their chains and throw off their shackles. Let's look at the original word, to, to cast away. To break the chains, the restraints, to cast off all restraint, to no longer be, you know, under God's restraint. 
Is this really surprising? This shouldn't surprise us at all that this is what human beings want. Guys, this is what Satan desires. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 through 14. It says, How you are fallen from heaven, O shining star, son of the morning. You have been thrown down to the earth, you who destroyed the nations of the world. For you said to yourself, I will ascend to heaven and set my throne above God's stars. I will preside on the mountain of the gods far away in the north. I will climb to the highest heavens and be like the most high. That's essentially right there. That last line is what we read from Ray Kurzweil's book, 2006 book, Singularity is Near. Humans are going to move forward into the universe and infuse it with our greatness, you know, our wonderful greatness. No mention in all of the, the wonderful things that he mentions in there of our sin, of all the evil perpetrated by humanity, but the wickedness of the human heart. Of course, you know, in his world, these transhumanist technologies, they aren't going to amplify any of those evils. It's all going to be good, right? Everything's going to be good. And we're going to be the rulers of the universe. As this isn't just Satan's desire, it's mankind, fallen mankind's desire as well. Going back to the Garden of Eden, remember, you will not die if you eat of that. You will be like God. That's, that's humanity's desire, too. Humanity wants to climb to the highest heavens and be like the Most High, just as Satan does. And I believe this, as humanity becomes exponentially more powerful adopting these technologies, it brings us not just from, into spiritual rebellion, which we've been in since the Garden of Eden, but it brings mankind into direct physical conflict and rebellion with the Lord and creator of this universe as well. That's what we read about here in Psalm 2. And again, let there, don't have any doubt about it. I know there are a lot of people that say, no, that's not what it means. But let's look at the book of Revelation. That's what it says Armageddon is. Here's Revelation 16, 14 and Revelation 19, 19. We read, they're demonic spirits who work miracles and go out to all the rulers of the world to gather them for battle against each other? Nope. Against the Lord on that great judgment day of God Almighty. And then we, we read here in Revelation 19, 19, Then I saw the beast, that would be the Antichrist, and the kings of the world and their armies gathered together to fight Against one another? That's, that's what the conventional wisdom says. But that's not what the Bible says. It says, gathered together to fight against the one sitting on the horse and his army. Who is the one sitting on the horse? Jesus Christ is the one sitting on the horse. Guys, this, this is where humanity is headed. That is why this... You know, Internet of Bodies, Internet of Brains by 2050 is a sign of the second coming because all of this is taking us clearly on a path toward Armageddon, toward a direct physical confrontation with the Lord and creator of this universe. It's the Lord and his anointed one, Jesus Christ, the armies of the world are going to engage in a physical rebellion, trying to cast off what they see as chains placed on them by God. That's what Ray Kurzweil has told us. Hey, we're going to go out into the universe. We're going to run this place. Ray Kurzweil's in for a rude awakening, if that's what he believes. I pray... That he comes to see the truth and understand that all the things that he says that he desires, immortality, good health, 
love, all, all of these things that he listed, they're all freely available to those who know Jesus Christ, who invite him into their lives and trust in him and what he did on the cross. Because we're all fallen. We're all sin, sinful men and women. And Jesus died on the cross. He shed his blood and paid the price. He paid the penalty for our sin because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. That means our destination is hell, eternal separation from God, unless a miracle occurs and some sort of intervention takes place. And fortunately, that happened at the cross when Jesus died for us so that we could be reconciled with God, so that when God looks at us, when he looks at me, a sinner, he doesn't see the sinner I am. He sees Jesus Christ, his son, because of what Jesus did. Guys, I hope that everybody out there watching understands that and has a relationship with Christ, but understand there are many people who don't. And to them, well, this is the most logical next step. We all evolved from monkeys. And the next step is to augment ourselves with the technology we're creating and become post-humans. And then we can go out into the universe with our exponentially expanding intelligence conquer everything and infuse it with our greatness. That's this Tower of Babel language. It's Garden of Eden language. This is how the rebellion, this is just the latest phase of humanity's rebellion. I believe it will end at the second coming of Jesus Christ. At least this phase of the rebellion. We know there will be a rebellion at the end of the millennium as well. But guys, this may seem like crazy stuff, but again, we've been talking about this for 20 years. And here we are, we're witnessing these things happen. We're seeing these things take place. We're seeing them come about. I think this is where all of this is headed. And when you understand that, some of the pieces of the puzzle start to fall into place. Guys, Jesus is coming. And Jesus is coming soon. So what do you think? Let me know what you think. Leave your comments below. Make sure to hit the like, share, and subscribe buttons. And God willing, I will see you on Friday. Bye. If you want to learn more about the end times and Bible prophecy, make sure to visit my Substack at brittgillette.substack.com. There you'll find my latest videos and articles, as well as notes where I share the latest news headlines, the articles I'm reading, and the videos I'm watching. Subscribe for free, and each new post on Substack will be sent directly to your email. Just scroll to the bottom of the homepage and hit the subscribe button. As an added bonus, your first welcome email will include a link to a copy of my free ebook, Seven Signs of the End Times. Also, make sure to check out all of my books. Just look up Brit Gillette on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Apple iBooks, Google Books, Kobo, or anywhere books are sold. Thanks for watching today, and until next time, keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith.